In this video, we want to look at the mutual induction between two solenoids. So a solenoid, if I get a picture here, uh, is, a, is many tightly wound loops of uh, wire in a row, and it has some length L, some diameter D. And we're going to run a current through this thing, and it creates a magnetic field. So let's give it some parameters. We're going to say this coil has 180 turns, which is sort of each loop of wire. It has a length, we'll say 14 centimeters. We'll give ourselves a diameter of 2.2 centimeters, and we're going to run a current through this, and we'll call this current small i of 0.1. 1 amps. And we want to see uh, what it induces in another solenoid that's wrapped around this first one. And so we're going to say it's uh -huh, tightly wound. What does that mean? If we see tightly wound, what that's really telling us is that we can approximate that uh, the diameter of the two coils are about the same. Okay, but we're going to say this coil only has 20 turns. And we want to find the EMF in induced in this coil. All right, so if, in fact, the current is steady at 0 0.1 amps, uh, the magnetic field is going to be steady, and the magnetic flux will be steady. There'll be no uh, in induced EMF at all, because you need a changing magnetic flux to induce an EMF. So we're going to say that this is increasing, the current is increasing at a rate of 2,000 amps per second. We're getting a really large increasing rate, so we get some sort of reasonable number. Obviously, it's not going to be increasing at that rate for very long, uh, less than a second, because that's going to uh, uh, be a whole lot of current. And so if we say that it's increasing at 2,000 amps per second, what that's really saying is that the derivative of the current with respect to time is 2,000, that the, the derivative is a constant. It's increasing at this constant rate. Okay, so what is happening then um, in the outer coil? What's being induced? To, to do that, we need to find the flux in the initial coil and the rate of change of flux. So if we want to calculate the, the flux, the magnetic flux induced by the, well, created by the, the first coil, that's, we know this integral uh, over some surface of B dot dA. And so if we look sort of, what, what are we looking at? We, we want to look at the inside with this, this uh, uh, sort of face on these two solenoids, one tightly wound around the other. And so the first one creates this magnetic field, we'll say, is uh, out of the page here. And the, the idea of a solenoid is uh, from previous chapters when we looked at that, is that it creates a constant field everywhere inside the solenoid, and it's zero everywhere outside the solenoid. And so if we the n-hat vector is perpendicular to the plane of the coil as well, and so that's parallel to the magnetic field, and so this, uh, and since it's constant everywhere, wrong color, that this um, flux just becomes then the product of this constant magnetic field to this area where the n hat vector corresponding to that area element is is parallel to the magnetic field all right and this area then is the area of the inner coil because that's the only place where there is non-zero uh, magnetic field all right the magnetic field created by a uh, solenoid an ideal solenoid of course uh, mu naught times the turns per unit length and the current I then through the through the coil, which we hear uh, small i will use, mu naught and small i in this case, and then um, times the area, and the area here is pi r squared, the radius of the the coil, the radius being 1.1 centimeters. Okay, so I now know all these parameters. I can um, 
uh, put these put calculate these calculate the flux at this moment if I if I need to I get 6.14 times 10 to negative 8 Weber's just I have now all these parameters I can do that but okay so that's the flux but we want to know uh, what is being induced in the outer coil okay so let's find first the mutual induction between the two coils now the mutual induction is the same whether you're talking about one coil induced on the second or the second on the first but in this case if we say the uh, the inner one is coil one say the mutual inductance uh, for the outer one is in the number of turns of the second one which we call two times the average flux per uh, uh, coil through each coil divided by the current going through the other, the first coil okay and so first what well what about this do we have to be be careful about this well the the outer since there is no other flux except the flux through the inner coil and the as we see here the coils are superimposed on each other the average flux uh, in the first coil it's created by the first coil is in fact the same average flux through each coil in in the outer coil so the the flux that we calculated before is in fact the the flux that goes into this expression the average flux through each coil in the outer coil all right so we know how many coils they are there are on the outer one that was 20 and we've calculated this flux 6.14 times 10 to the minus 8 and the current through the the first coil was 0.1 amps and so now we can find the mutual inductance which is 1.23 times 10 to the minus 5 henrys all right and so the mutual inductance is uh is useful to have because then we can go ahead and calculate the induced emf in the second coil which is just given by the mutual inductance times the derivative of the current the rate at which the current is changing and that we like that because that was uh, one of the things we were given initially and so that is so 1.23 we know everything now the negative side is just giving us an orientation um, uh, 2000 we have this 10 to the minus 5 here and I calculate that to be negative 2.46 times 10 to the minus 2 volts and so um, this is the the induced EMF